All right. In this section, section 17.3, we will be looking at titrations and how the pH changes as the course of the titration uh, goes on. So let's start with looking at this particular titration. Over here on the right, we've got uh, hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, and it is being titrated with sodium hydroxide. Typically, we would put something like an indicator in there to tell us that when we have reached the equivalence point. However, we can measure the pH and uh, as we add our titrant, and by monitoring that pH and graphing it, we can get information about not only the concentration, but the Ka of the acid. Now, since this one is a strong acid, uh, we're not going to get the Ka, but we, uh, but we can get useful information uh, by graphing it. So we want to look at what does this kind of graphical information look like. So again, we're going to start with the titration of a strong acid with a strong base. Uh, again, uh, uh, the strong acid could be something like hydrochloric acid, and the strong base could be something like sodium hydroxide. We will find that at the beginning, at uh, volume equal to zero, that the pH will be determined entirely by the concentration of that strong acid. As we start to add some sodium hydroxide, we will find that the pH will ever so gradually increase but not very quickly. And the reason is, is that there's a whole bunch of acid in the solution, and we're just adding a little bit of sodium hydroxide at a time. And as we do that, we're decreasing the concentration of sodium hydroxide, but it's still a strong acid solution. And so you will see that the pH is still quite low. As we get closer to the equivalence point, and the equivalence point is when we have the same number of moles of acid and base, as we get closer to the equivalence point, we will find that the pH will start to increase quite rapidly. And, uh, and right before and right after the equivalence point will be the point where this has the greatest slope. And so when you're looking at a curve and you're trying to figure out what the equivalence point is, you want to look for the point of the greatest slope, or in math terms, the inflection point. All right, uh, when I was plotting out this data, uh, I found that uh, the pH at 49.9 milliliters was about 4, and at 50 was 7, and at 50.1, the pH came out to almost 10. So there was a, a 6 pH point uh, uh, switch in pH over a 0.2 uh, milliliter addition of sodium hydroxide. And that just that tells you how quickly that pH can change over a very short region. Uh, that's about four drops. So that, that's a very, very quick uh, uh, increase in the pH. We will find that if we have a strong acid titrated with a strong base, the pH at the equivalence point should come out to exactly 7. And that once we get past the equivalence point, the pH will level off fairly quickly and we will get to a, a fairly high uh, uh, pH because we're, we're just adding excess sodium hydroxide. Well, now what we want to do is let's look at the opposite situation. What if we titrated a strong base with a strong acid? Well, here we would start off with a very high pH. All right, and it looks like the whole thing is flipped over. So we would start off with a very high pH, and the pH would gradually decrease as we add strong acid. Just before we get to the equivalence point, the pH would drop very, very quickly, and then again it would level off. The pH at the equivalence point, again, since it's strong acid and strong base, uh, uh, the pH at the equivalence point should be 7. And then the pH would continue to drop after we add excess acid, so it would level off quite a bit. So that is the titration of a strong base with a strong acid. Now we're going to look at the titration curve of a weak acid titrated with a strong base. So for a weak acid, you'll notice that the curve looks significantly different. Here, instead of having a really low pH that jumps up very quickly at the end, it gradually goes up, and as it goes up, uh, as it gradually goes up, we will find uh, that 
uh, as we get close to the end, it will have a jump, but it's not quite as dramatic as the strong acid titrated with a strong base. If we're trying to do calculations, calculating the pH at the initial point, uh, we're going to do that just like a chapter 16 problem. We will do one of those here in just a little bit. Uh, we'll use the Ka and the concentration to calculate the pH. Anything, once we've started adding some of the base, we will have neutralized some of that acid and we will have both the weak acid and the conjugate base. And so in this region, it will be a buffer. And anything that's in the buffer range, we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to solve it. Now we will have to do before and after tables and again, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, uh, but but, uh, but we'll, we'll use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation in this region. And then again, right before we get to the equivalence point, it will go up fairly sharply. We will find the equivalence point will be greater than seven. That's because at the equivalence point, we are going to have, uh, we're going to have just the conjugate base of the weak acid, which is a weak base. And therefore, uh, uh, we will have a basic solution. And just as we've seen before, the pH will level off after the equivalence point. Now, there's a special point along the way when we're doing this kind of titration. The equivalence point, in this case, the equivalence point is 50 milliliters, but the equivalence point, uh, um, halfway to the equivalence point, we will have neutralized half of the weak acid and converted it into the conjugate base. That means that at that point, we will have the same amount of weak acid and conjugate base. So the concentrations of those two things will be equal to each other. Well, at that point, the pH will be equal to the pKa because if the concentration of our weak acid and the conjugate base are equal to each other, then this ratio is 1 and the log of 1 is 0. So that pH will be equal to the pKa. So how high this curve is tells you how strong the acid is. The stronger the acid, the further down this curve will be. The weaker the acid, the further up it will be. And in fact, here is a graph of, uh, of several different titration curves for different strength acids. Um, so here we've got a strong acid. Here is a, uh, here is a, uh, a weak acid, still pretty strong, but it's a weak acid. Here's a weaker one, even weaker, even weaker. We will find there's some key differences between strong acids and weak acids. The solution of a weak acid will have a higher initial pH than that of the strong acid because it's just not as dissociated. We'll find that the pH at the equivalence point, the change in the pH is not going to be as big. And in fact, if you get one like this, where the, the Ka is 10 to the negative 8, you're not going to have a very steep increase in pH at all. It's harder to observe those equivalence points. And then uh, the pH at the equivalence point is going to be greater than 7. And the, the weaker the acid is, the stronger the conjugate base, meaning the, the more basic it will be at the equivalence point. All right. I've got one more that I want to look at uh, uh, before we do our problems, and that is the titration of a weak base with a strong acid. When we titrate a weak base with a strong acid, we start off here at a very high pH. So uh, uh, we will use the Kb of our weak base to determine the pH at this point. Uh, you can use, uh, this is going to be the buffer region, anything from just starting to add base almost right to down here. Uh, that's all going to be in the buffer region. And uh, you'll be able to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation here. And we'll find that the pH at the equivalence point is going to be less than 7. And as usual, we'll find that the pH levels off once we get past the equivalence point and we've added excess acid. So now we want to look at uh, number 33. And just as a reminder, strong acid, strong base, the pH at the equivalence point should be 7. Strong base, strong acid, also 7. Weak acid with a strong base, the pH at the equivalence point should be above 7. And for a weak base, which is this one, weak base titrated with a strong acid, pH at the equivalence point should be less than 7. So let's look at number 33 and then number 41. <laughs> 
So here is number 33 on the in-class assignment. Predict whether the equivalence point uh, uh, of each of these is going to be below, above, or at a pH of 7. Well, here we've got bicarbonate titrated with sodium hydroxide. Well, sodium hydroxide is a strong base, and bicarbonate would be a weak acid. So weak acid, strong base. Uh, uh, pH at the equivalence point is going to be greater than 7. It will definitely be a basic equivalence point. Here we've got ammonia titrated with HCl. That's a weak base titrated with a strong acid. Uh, and that is just like the one we just looked at a minute ago, and the pH at the equivalence point will definitely be less than 7. For KOH, titrated with HBr, the pH at the equivalence point is going to be at 7. All right, because that's a strong base titrated with a strong acid. So now we want to look at number 41. And number 41 is right here. And there are a few. Th this is a very long problem uh, and probably one where uh, uh, you may want to pause in the middle of the video and, uh, and take your time here. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to use as abbreviations to make this seem a little bit less cumbersome. And that is we're going to use HA in place of HC2H3O2. So uh, we know it's acetic acid, but we're going to use the generic HA for the acid. For the conjugate base of that acid, we're going to use A minus, and that will be C2H3O2 minus. So a 50 milliliter sample of 0 0.150 molar acetic acid is titrated with uh, 0 0.150 molar sodium hydroxide. Calculate the pH after the following volumes of base have been added. Well, when none of the base has been added, this is just the 0.15 molar, 150 molar acetic acid, and we can write this out as a regular ice table. So it'll look like this, so HA, plus H2O will give us hydronium and hydroxide. Initial change equilibrium. All right, our initial concentration is 0 0.150. Water we can ignore, 0, 0. This is just like a chapter 16 problem minus x, so 0 0.150 minus x, and then plus x, and plus x. All right, our Ka is the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of, oh, I wrote the wrong thing down here. This should be A minus, not hydroxide. This is not water. That should be A minus, so concentration of our conjugate base, divided by the concentration of HA. Uh, the, the, the value, the Ka value is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So we have our values in terms of X, so we're going to put 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, that is equal to x squared over 0 0.150 minus x. Now, of course, we want to check to make sure that it's okay to neglect x here. And uh, it, it is okay to neglect x, but let's go ahead and do the math. So uh, 0.15 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, and that gives us 8,333. It's definitely okay to neglect x. So we're going to take that and neglect x. When we neglect x, that will give us x squared is 0 0.15 times 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. All right, so x is going to be the square root of that value, 
So let's go ahead and punch that into our calculator. So 0.15 times 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, and that gives us 2.7, and we will take the square root of that number, and that will give us uh, 1.64 times 10 to the negative 3. That is the hydronium ion concentration, and so our pH is going just to be the negative log of that number. So I'm going to do negative log of our answer. And that gives us 2.78. So our pH at the initial point is 2.78. Now I'm going to show you where this is on the graph uh, because I want you to be able to kind of keep up with what's going on here. So here here is our graph. All right, here is our graph of a, of a weak acid titrated with a strong base. And we just calculated this very first point. Now, when I prepared this, I, uh, I did a big spreadsheet and I, I did like, I don't know, a lot of points. Not quite a hundred points, but I did a whole bunch of points and did all the calculations there. Uh, but we're just going to do several of the key points as we go along. So now we want to look at what happens at or what happens as we're adding a uh, base. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to get the amounts of our weak acid and our strong base. So uh, I'm going to do some calculations here. Our moles of our weak acid is going to be equal to 25.0 milliliters times 0 0.150 molar. Now, since I'm using milliliters here, the number I'm going to get is going to be in millimoles. Uh, it's going to be in millimoles instead of that. And this is not 25. That should be 50 because that is the initial amount we started with. So our initial amount of our weak acid was 50 milliliters. So 50 Point zero times 0.15. So 50 times 0.15, and that gives us 7.50 millimoles of acid. And the reason I'm choosing millimoles, you could just do moles and it would be 7.50 times 10 to the negative third. It's just easier to write it as millimoles. For our moles of hydroxide, that is going to be 25.0 milliliters times 0 0.150 molar, because that is our concentration of the base. And so we'll get 25 times uh, 0.15, and that's going to give us 3.75. So now we're going to do a before and after table where we've got our weak acid plus hydroxide and that that gives us our conjugate base plus water. And like I said, this will be a before and after table. And we're going to put moles in here. So this will be 7.50 and then the moles of base would be 3.75. And then the moles of the conjugate base that we started with before the titration began was zero and water we can ignore. So when we look at this, uh, the limiting reaction between those two is clearly going to be hydroxide. So we're going to use up all of that hydroxide. So minus 3.75 millimoles, and that will give us zero moles of hydroxide. This will be minus 3.75 millimoles, and that will give us 3.75. And then this will be plus 3.75 and 3.75. All right, so at this point, we need to ask ourselves, is this a buffer? And the way that we answer that is we look at, is there some of the weak acid and some of the conjugate base? If there's some of each, then yes, it is a buffer. So this is a buffer. And since it's a buffer, we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation.
the pH will be equal to the pKa plus the log of the concentration of uh, the conjugate base over the concentration of our weak acid. Now, instead of concentrations here, we can simply use the moles. And the reason we can do that is if we were to calculate the concentrations, we would divide each of those concentrations by the same volume. So a modification we can do for this when we're doing a titration is that it's the pKa plus the log of the number of moles of A minus over the number of moles of HA. All right, so now I will come over here and we'll finish off this calculation. So pH is equal to the negative log of uh, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 plus the log of 3.75 over 3.75. Now that, I don't even need to punch that in because 3.75 divided by 3.75 is 1 and the log of 1 is 0. So that means that our pH is equal to 4.74 and that means our pH is equal to the pKa. Now I'm going to switch back over to that graph and show you where we are. So here on this graph, we are halfway, we're at 25 milliliters, and uh, our pH at that point is, uh, is uh, let's see, our pH at that point is, let's see, 4.74, that's what we just calculated. And so again, we are halfway to the equivalence point, and it's a special point where the pH equals the pKa. So that, that's pretty cool. All right. Well, now that we've done that, let's look at what happens at this point, 49.5 milliliters. So 49.5 milliliters. Well, we'll start with our moles of HA is still, the amount that we started with is still uh, 7.50 millimoles. I have too many M's there. Let's get rid of one of those M's. All right, so 7.50 millimoles of HA. Our moles of hydroxide are going to be uh, 49.5 milliliters times 0 0.150 molar. And we'll punch that in and we'll get 49.5 times 0.15 and that gives us 7.425 millimoles of hydroxide. Well, just like before, we're going to do a before and after table. So HA plus hydroxide uh, gives us a minus plus H2O. Before, we had 7.50, 7.425, and 0. Water we can ignore. Uh, when we look at these, our limiting reactant here is still hydroxide, so we're going to do minus 7.425, and that will give us 0. This will be minus 7.425, so uh, 7.5 minus 7.425 gives us 0 0.075. And then here, this is going to be plus four, uh, 7, uh, uh, plus 7.425. Let me try that again there. So 7.425. So 7.425. Well, this technically is still a buffer. So uh, because it contains both the weak acid and its conjugate base, it is still a buffer. Our pH at this point is going to be uh, the pKa, and our pKa uh, uh, up here, we determined our pKa was 4.74. And then our log of 7.425 divided by 0 
and we'll do uh, 4.74 plus the log of 7.425 divided by 0 0.075 and close parentheses and the number we get there is 6.74 all right, just to show you where we're at, I'm going to go back to that uh, graph, and we are right before the equivalence point. We're half a milliliter before the equivalence point, and, and almost up to a pH of 7, pH 6.74, so we're right there. All right, our next point is going to be right at the equivalence point. So let's do our next calculation, which, as I mentioned, is right at the equivalence point at 50 milliliters. So uh, we want to write down the number of moles, and this one takes a lot of space, so I'm going to go a little bit above here. I'm going to do our moles of HA, which again is the same number of moles that we had previously. It's 7.50 millimoles of our weak acid. For our, uh, for our base at 50 milliliters, our moles of hydroxide is going to be equal to 50.0 milliliters times 0 0.150 molar, and that also comes out to 7.50 millimoles of hydroxide. Well, you can tell by looking at that that we're at the equivalence point. However, I'm going to uh, I'm going to write this down uh, write this down as a before and after table just to illustrate that we are at the equivalence point. So, HA plus hydroxide gives us the conjugate base plus H2O. We will have a before and after table. For before, we had 7.50, 7.50, and 0. And you can tell we don't just have one limiting reactant because we have exactly the same amount. That means they're both limiting reactants. We are at the equivalence point. We're going to use up all of them. So 7.50 minus 7, uh, and this will be 0, minus 7.50, that will also be 0. And this will be plus 7.50, which is 7.50. So that is the number of millimoles of our conjugate base. This is not a buffer. And because it is not a buffer, that means that we need to determine what the concentration of that conjugate base is. So I'm going to come over here and write our conjugate base, and we want that 7.50. 50 millimoles of A minus, and we want to divide that by the total volume of our solution. Well, we started off with 50 milliliters and we added 50 more milliliters. So we're going to have 50 milliliters plus 50 plus 50 milliliters. All right, so 50 plus 50, that, of course, is 100. And uh, so uh, 7.5 divided by 100, and that gives us 0 0.0750 molar. So we essentially, the, this solution is equivalent to, have, uh, to taking 7.50 millimoles of sodium acetate, throwing it into water, and seeing what the pH is. So we're going to set this up as a concentration table, just like what we saw in chapter 16 when we were talking about the conjugate bases of uh, weak acids. So we've got A minus AQ in water. It dissociates some amount to give us HA, AQ, plus hydroxide ion, AQ, so plus the hydroxide ion. I got a little carried away there with my negative sign. All right, so 
initial change equilibrium and our initial concentration here is 0 0.075 water we can ignore this is 0 this is 0 minus x plus x plus x this should look very familiar so 0 0.075 minus x x and x For Kb, because we have a base here, it's going to be the concentration of HA times the concentration of hydroxide divided by the concentration of A minus. And that that is going to be equal to Kw over Ka. Kw, of course, is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. All right, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And uh, so we'll do uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 14. We will divide that by 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And we get 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. And that's our value for Kb. All right, so Kb is equal to this expression. So we'll put 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10 is equal to x squared over 0 0.075 minus x. What we have to determine is, is it OK to neglect x? So we'll do the 0 0.075 divided by 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. And we will definitely see it is OK to neglect x. Our value there for uh, that is definitely greater than 400 by a long shot. So we are going to neglect x. Neglect x. All right. So we'll cross multiply, we'll get x squared is 0 0.075 times 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. All right, so we cross multiply those. We'll take the square root to get x. So 0 0.075 uh, times 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. And then, like I said, we will take the square root of that. So the square root of our answer gives us 6.48. We're going to call that 6.5 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. If we go back and look here at the table, that is the hydroxide ion concentration. So I'm going to put that is hydroxide. That means our pOH is the negative log of 6.5 times 10 to the negative 6. Always be careful when you calculate pOH, and you'll have because we're going to have to subtract that number from uh, uh, from 14. So I'm going to do negative log, and I'm just going to pick the answer, and that gives us 5.19. So pOH is equal to 5.19. That means our pH is 14 minus 5.19. And that gives us 8.81. So our pH is equal to 8.81. Now, as far as where we're at, I'm going to go back to that, uh, that plot. And we are right here at the equivalence point. You'll see that it is definitely greater than 7. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, it comes out to 8.81 here. Uh, so it's right there. It's pretty cool. All right. From here on out, we're going to be beyond the equivalence point. And so here our strategy is going to change a little bit. I'm going to try a different color pen and see if this helps a little bit. Uh, we still want to do the same thing where we list the number of moles. So our moles of HA, our moles of HA is still 7.50 millimoles of our weak acid, our acetic acid. 
for our base, our moles of OH minus, that is equal to uh, 50.5 milliliters times 0 0.150 molar. And we'll punch that number in, 50.5 times 0 0.150. And that gives us uh, 7.575 millimoles of OH. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, we're going to do a before and after table. So just like what we've done on every single one, so HA plus hydroxide gives us A minus plus H2O. So just like what we've done on all of these other ones, we'll have a before and after. So here we had uh, 7.50, and then for the hydroxide, it was 7.575, and then our acetate was zero. Well, as far as which one is the limiting reactant, since we're now beyond the equivalence point, our limiting reactant is going to be HA. So it'll be minus 7.50, and that gives us that minus 7.50, and that gives us 0 0.075. And I'm going to double check that, so minus 7.50. Yeah, so 0 0.075. And this will be plus 7.50, 7.50. At this point, I usually like to ask my students, is this a buffer? And remember, for it to be a buffer, we need to have both the weak acid and the conjugate base. And you'll see that we don't have both of those, so this is not a buffer. What we have is a strong base and a weak base. And when it comes to determining the pH of this solution, we're going to look just at the strong base. So we're going to take these excess moles of hydroxide and divide by the new volume to give us our concentration of hydroxide. So our concentration of hydroxide is going to be 0 0.075 millimoles of OH. And we want to divide that by our, our new volume. Our new volume is 50.0 milliliters. That was our original volume of the acid. Plus the 50.5 milliliters that we've added uh, once we got to this point here. So 50.5. So we'll divide that by, that's going to be 100.5, and that gives us 7.5 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. Well, that is our concentration of hydroxide. So that means our pOH is the negative log of 7.5 times 10 to the negative 4. So we'll do the negative log of uh, 7. Uh, we're just going to take our answer. There we go. And you'll see we get 3.13. Uh, 3. Now, don't be confused. That's not the pH. That is the pOH. Our pH is 14 minus 3.13. 3. So 14 uh, uh, minus 3.13, and that gives us 10.87. So you can see already our pH is up really, really high, and we've only gone half a milliliter beyond our equivalence point. I am going to go back and show you what this looks like on here. We are at 50.5, so we're just barely beyond the, uh, beyond the equivalence point, and you'll see we're already here up over 10, almost to 11, and now it's going to flatten out. I think our next point is out here at, um, yeah, it's at 65. So let's go back to our in-class assignment, and we're going to do 65 milliliters. All right, I'm going to try yet another color pen, see how this looks. Oh, that one looks nice. All right, so moles of HA is going to be equal still to 7.50 millimoles of HA.
our moles of hydroxide ion is going to be equal to uh, 65.0 milliliters times 0 0.150 molar. So 0 0.150 molar. So 65 times 0.15 and that gives us 9.75 millimoles of hydroxide. All right, we are going to do a before and after table here. So HA plus hydroxide gives us A minus plus H2O. Before and after. For HA, it's 7.50. 9.75 for hydroxide and this was zero. Clearly our limiting reactant here is HA, so 7.50 minus 7.50. This will increase by 7.50. Our HA will go down to zero. Our hydroxide, I'm going to go ahead and calculate that just to make sure, 9.75 minus 7.5 and that gives us 2.25 uh, millimoles and then this is 7.50 again just like what we had on the previous one this is we've got strong base and weak base our strong base is going to dictate the p or the the ph so our hydroxide is going to be equal to 2.25 millimoles of oh minus we're going to divide that by the total volume which is 50.0 milliliters plus 65.0 milliliters. So 2.25 divided by, uh, we'll do the sum here, 50 plus 65, and that gives us uh, 0 0.0196, we'll call it, molar. And again, that is our hydroxide ion. So our pOH is the negative log of 0 0.0196. So we'll do negative log of our answer. And we get 1.71. With 1.71, of course, we're going to subtract that to get our pH. So our pH, I need to scoot that up a little bit. pH is 14.00 minus 1.71. So 14 minus 1.71, and that gives us 12.29. And just to show you where we're at on that, we're going to go back to our, uh, uh, to our picture here. And we are at 65 milliliters, uh, and you'll see uh, 12.29. We're well beyond the equivalence point. We're into that range where it has flattened out. Okay. So we just have one or two little details left to take care of here. Uh, and we're going to go back to our slideshow and take care of these little details and that will wrap up uh, uh, the content for the third exam. So let's do this. We can use indicators and uh, so you probably have used phenylphthalein as an indicator before and the way that indicators work is like for phenylphthalein below about 8 it's completely colorless and above uh, between 8 and 9 it's a very light pink and 9 and above it's more like a bright pink. So if you can get it into this range where it's a very light pink color, then that tells you that you are in that specific pH range. You want your equivalence point to fall in that range where it is changing. So um, uh, if we had a strong acid with a strong base, uh, uh, phenylphthalein probably wouldn't be the 100% best indicator, but it wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't be a bad indicator. And the reason I say that is that uh, um, so it wouldn't be a bad indicator. And the reason I say that is that uh, um, it would be, it, there's such a dramatic change here, you should be able to, to work it with a strong acid, strong base. However, um, you could use probably something like bromothymol blue, uh, and it has, a, it has a color change right at seven. 
if you're if you're down here in this range so uh, for example if we were titrating a weak base with a strong acid we might choose methyl red because it changes it's yellow um, it's yellow above six and it is uh, kind of red uh, down below six and it's so it's going to be orange or below four it's going to be red and around five it's orange color so we can use uh, we can use these indicators as a way to tell us when our reaction is over. If we don't want to monitor it, monitor it on a pH meter, we can monitor it with an indicator. So each indicator has its own pH range over which it changes color. So um, the best indicator is going to be the one where if the equivalence point falls in the range where it changes. So for example, uh, if we titrate a weak acid with a strong base, and we just went through a big long calculation titrating a weak acid with a strong base. In fact, this looks just like the curve we just did. Uh, um, we'll find that the color change is between 8.3 and 10. And if you recall, our equivalence point was at 8.81. That falls right in that range. And so phenolphthalein is a perfect indi perfect indicator for titrating something like uh, acetic acid with uh, a strong base because the equivalence point is going to fall right there in the middle where it's changing color. So if you can titrate it just to the point where it barely turns pink, you have done a perfect titration. Now, uh, it, it, you wouldn't want to choose something like methyl red because uh, the color change would happen completely before you even got to the equivalence point. It would turn yellow and you would still be a, a good five or six milliliters away from the equivalence, equivalence point. So that would not be an ideal indicator. However, if we were uh, doing a titration of a weak base with a strong acid, uh, um, Phenolphthalein would be a bad indicator because it would go colorless before we even got to, uh, uh, before we got to the equivalence point. So we wouldn't be able to tell exactly where the equivalence point is. And a better one would be, uh, would be methyl red. And methyl red, uh, that, that uh, uh, equivalence point is right there close to five. And so this would be a good indicator. All right, finally, we can look at something that are, uh, called polyprotic acids. And polyprotic acids, uh, this one is phosphorus acid. So this is the uh, titration of phosphorus acid. You'll notice because there's more than one acidic hydrogen, we will have more than one equivalence point. So the first equivalence point uh, here, we're going to have almost 100% in the form where we have three hydrogens. Uh, here, we would have most of it in the form where we have two hydrogens and then uh, and then here uh, at this equivalence point we would have uh, just the one hydrogen left and then anything beyond that uh, uh, the next equivalence point is going to be really really hard to observe so uh, we can also get what the the pkas of those are pka1 and pka2 by getting the pH halfway between where we start and where the first equivalence point is, halfway between the first equivalence point and the second equivalence point, that would give us pKa2. So that is an example of a polyprotic acid. Uh, we used to do these in lab, but uh, we don't do them anymore. All right, well, that represents the end of the content for the third exam.